A former daughter-in-law hosts her former in-laws for a lunch that will end up leaving three of them dead and one in critical condition fighting for his life. And it has all of Australia giving some major side eye as to her story about the murderous mushrooms and where they came from. <laughs> Hello Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa. The sofa's behind me still pretending to be a sofa. My name's Paul and our sassy sidekick Mr. Roscoe Pico Train is sitting over here under some covers though I will almost guarantee you that he is going to be making his little chicken scratching once I start talking and that's when he'll make his appearance. Now today we're going to be talking about a case that has been I don't even know what to say about this one but in this point in time nothing shocks me anymore right uh, but we're going to be talking about the case that has become known as like the murderous mushroom case and you'll soon learn why. Now specifically Specifically for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to review this in a few different ways. Number one, we're going to do our little, you know, overview of it, which will be a little bit more in depth than usual because there's just not a ton out about it yet. So we're going to go over like how we arrived at this video. Then we're going to be reviewing some articles that will go over Erin Patterson. That is the person at the center of this that we're kind of questioning what her motives were. She gave a statement that has definitely got us going, uh, yeah, okay. So there's that. Then secondly, she also did like a brief interview with some media that stopped her outside of her house. And that was a game changer for me. Okay. So we're going to be reviewing some clips from that. And that's how we'll do that. And uh, what we're going to do before we do all that is we're going to open the doors. We're going to fluff the cushions up because we do need to make room for today's sponsor who has made this video possible. Y'all go on and welcome a man with a warm sofa welcome. So I want to share a new product that I found. It's in the fragrance category, but this time it's for your car. Now what's even better about it is this is Scentbird's sister company and y'all already know if you follow me that I have fallen in love with Scentbird. So I am stoked about this one and we're actually going to take a field trip to the car to talk about it. Drift creates air care products for your car and your home. All materials they use are sustainable and their scents are made with natural essential and fragrance oils. Now their car products are just around $9 for wood and metal and $14 for stone. Okay so y'all before we even get into how the subscription works and all that kind of stuff we're gonna talk about the scent. Ugh. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> it makes me want to cry. It smells so good. Okay, so this is the first one I got. It's teak, dr teak, drift on the thing. Musk, amber, pepper, teak, and cedar. Just the cedar smell reminds me of like childhood walks in the woods with my parents, fall, crisp. It is amazing. Take my money drift. Okay, so like I said, it's a subscription service. You get like a little starter kit. So you get this metal thing right here and I'll show a close up of it on my little uh, thing up here. But you get this and then you get your, you know, scent. I just showed you it's this one for this month. And you get some little instructions like this. It comes in the cute box that you saw. I love the subscription model because you don't have to think about it. Now, another good thing about the subscription and letting you switch it out every 30 days is it gets you away from like that nose blindness. That's not gonna happen with this. You're gonna have something fresh to keep everything going. While I'm all about a subscription service, I also need like ease and accessibility, that type of stuff. You can switch it up. You can do whatever you want. They are very like made to order, customizable. Let's make this fit you. Now, this is another thing that I love about them where I'm like, wow, they really thought about everything. So they send you this little reusable bag and you can put the thing in it in between uses. Is this not genius? They literally have thought of everything. Now, make sure to use my code sofa 55 at drift you're gonna get 55 percent off and y'all on your first month's order it makes it like a little over four dollars okay i mean hello like i said take my money all right everybody be sure and give them a little check out all the stuff is down in the description below oh Okay, now let's go ahead and do an overview. Let's talk about how we arrived at this video. So first we need to take a little journey and that journey is gonna be all the way to Australia, specifically Gippsland, Victoria. Today we're gonna to be talking about Erin Patterson. She prepared a beef Wellington luncheon for her former in-laws and uh, it did not end well. And yes, I say former in-laws, that is correct. Erin was separated from her husband, Simon Patterson, but she did remain 
staying close with her former in-law. She says that, you know, they kept up their relationship. They were very close before the separation. Now, th this is how this went down. Patterson invited her former parents-in-law, that's Gail and Don Patterson, along with Gail's sister, Health Wil Wilkinson, and her husband, Ian. Now, this was for a luncheon on the July 29th at Aaron's home. Now, here's another part to it. Her former husband, her estranged husband, Simon, he was supposed to be joining, but he backed out last minute. So keep that in mind. But here's the only thing. Hours after this meal, the guest fell ill. And when I say ill, I'm talking deathly ill. Now, days later, three of them have passed. One of them, Ian, is fighting for his life. At the time of this video, he's still alive, but critical condition. So depending on when you see this, he might have already passed. Uh, obviously, we're hoping not, but that's just the, the state of things right now at this recording. And it does look like he's waiting a, a liver transplant. I mean, this is that serious. We're going to talk about these mushrooms because you see how, I mean, these people literally, this almost instantaneously killed them, right? I mean, this is major. It destroys the liver very quickly. These are incredibly dangerous, deadly mushrooms. And speaking of the mushrooms, let's go ahead and just talk about those for a minute. Now, the name of these mushrooms is Death Cap. Lovely name. I know. Okay, so we're going to refer to this article here on death caps. And when you see here on the screen, it says characteristics. Uh, the death cap mushroom, Amanita mushroom, it may be found in city environments associated with many species of imported trees. This is not a mushroom found naturally present in BC forest, although a single sighting of death cap with Gary Oak has been reported. While the known range of death cap mushrooms in BC includes Vancouver Island and the lower mainland, we do not know for certain if other areas in BC are affected. The mushroom was imported on the roots of trees planted in boulevards in Victoria and Vancouver. We do not know if it is also in other areas of the province. It looks like the Asian straw mushroom, and I can't say that word, and other common Asian varieties of edible Amanita species such as those, and it goes on here and it continues on. Okay, so my main thing with this is when we get into her excuse of where she got these mushrooms from, you're going to be like, eh, girl, yeah, no, this does not make sense, right? Now, let's go look at what the article says to do about these mushrooms. This has me scared to take a walk in the woods, to be quite honest, okay? Now, I know that this isn't right around where I live, obviously, or anything, but it's that serious. I mean, this is what's so shocking to me about this case. So let's look at what to do if you even see these. So it says, if you've eaten a death cat mushroom, Mushroom. If you suspect you've eaten a death cat mushroom, you should immediately go to an emergency room. Early treatment is important. To speed up treatment and improve the outcome, bring specimens of the mushroom with you to the hospital and information about the specific location where they were found. Uh, call the drug and poison line. Uh, and then listen to this. It says the symptoms of death cat mushroom poisoning include low blood pressure, nausea and vomiting, which begins 8 to 12 hours after ingestion. After up to 24 hours have passed, the symptoms seem to disappear and you might feel fine for up to 72 hours. Symptoms of liver and kidney damage start three to six days after the mushrooms were eaten. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So Ian, who's fighting for his life right now, waiting a liver transplant. I mean, y'all, this is that serious. You have to also wonder, because at this t stage in the game, I don't know how much they ate. But I mean, in my mind, when we're sitting here talking about this, it's like, imagine you're doing some kind of dish with mushrooms on it, right? Because she claims that they were mixed in with something. We'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm thinking, they probably ate a lot of them, right? This almost sounds like what we just read. Like if you accidentally ingest a little bit or whatever, but to eat an entire serving of these. And also these people were in their older years, like 66, 70, like that age range, right? So, I mean, you know, this was not good. So you can see why within hours they are deathly ill, right? It's, it's tragic. Okay, let's continue on. Now also, Aaron Patterson does have children and it was circulated in the beginning that the kids were like there present for the lunch but they didn't eat at that time. However, it's since come out that no, the children had gone to the movies. Now, keep that in mind as we get into how this day played out because everything when you start looking at the totality of it is just completely sus, right? So... Again, thank God the kids were at the movies, though. But also even weirder is she will claim that the next day the children ate leftovers, but they don't like mushrooms, so she scraped them off the plate. I have lots of questions about that, and we'll get to that later, because again, right off the bat, just keep this in mind. You just had four people to your home who are being hospitalized, severely sick. Why would you feed your children the food the next day? 
you had to put two and two together, right? I mean, you know, come on. Why would you do that? And then, oh, they don't like mushrooms, so we got rid of them. I mean, come on, right? And even, say she didn't know. Say she did not know. And the mushrooms were on the plate or whatever. These sound so poisonous. I'm like, what if some remnant of it was like even near the food? It sounds like it would make you sick. So we're going to come back to that. Let's talk about where she claims she got these from. Police believe toxic death cap mushrooms were served at the lunch. Erin says she bought them from a supermarket and an Asian grocer in Melbourne. So she claims she got these at a store, you know, but can't really remember and we'll get a little bit more into what she you know, really goes into about it but again as you learn about these it's just like uh girl i don't think you got these at a store right and also keep in mind that you know we haven't seen any recalls come out yet imagine here in the states if somebody claimed we've seen this before right of people trying to pull numbers like this where they're like oh well we got it here there is usually a major thing that will shut something down if there truly is a something that's wrong with this food has been distributed everywhere aside from a we might have had somebody locally do a poison at the grocery store at home stuff like that so there's that now here's the thing also an organization has spoken out otherwise so let's just take a couple of quick looks at this article so it says here this is by the guardian it says the comments come as the australian mushroom growers association has come out in defense of the supply chain saying there's no way poisonous mushrooms could be grown in commercial farms this fungus death caps only grows in the wild the association said in a statement commercial mushrooms are grown indoors in environmentally controlled rooms with strict hygiene protocols and food safety standards. The only mushrooms you can be sure are safe are fresh. Australian grown mushrooms bought from a trusted retailer. So yeah, not a cute look for Miss Erin. You know, now again, she's claiming, well, I don't really remember where one of the markets was. And another one was like a little Asia market or something. Remember how it said that they can be mistaken for that or whatever. But we'll also get into her experience with foraging herself here in a little bit. Now, like I said, one of her friends has spoken out. Now, this is speculation. This is allegedly, right? Because first of all, this is with Daily Mail. So take that into consideration. But this is like a source close to the family. So you you never know. So just know that with this. Uh, but I'm going to put these up here. We'll talk about them. So it says, Australian mushroom poisoning friend reveals Aaron Patterson was an experienced fungi forger. Now, this is from the uh, NZ Herald. Uh, and they're citing the Daily Mail article. And let's go on to that actual article. So it says, the mushroom cooked behind the toxic beef wellington that poisoned four people leaving three of them dead was an experienced fungi forager according to a source close to the family according to the daily mail australia aaron patterson was known to often and expertly pick wild mushrooms around victoria's gypsum region a friend of patterson's family revealed aaron was very good at foraging and at identifying different mushroom varieties the patterson family including aaron and his strange husband simon would pick mushrooms each year when they were in season the friend said so here's my thing let's go based on this is true all the more reason to be like well, wouldn't you know better than this like wouldn't you recognize this and why would you have these random mushrooms from other places if you're going to get in your own mushrooms that type of thing this part doesn't look good but again this is very speculative this is very he said she said so we just we have to take this with a grain of salt okay we can't get too serious about this part right here and on that note now that we've gotten kind of all that out of the way let's take a few minutes and we're going to go through an article that is talking about this statement that she released to authorities Go ahead and buckle the stuff with the seatbelt up, okay? Because let me tell you what, this one's going to have you going, uh, you know, depending on where you're at so far with this case, uh, the statement here, I was kind of like, uh, yeah, this isn't good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, screenshots of the articles up here. I'm doing the highlights of it that I felt there were the best talking points, and uh, we'll go through it and we'll discuss it. So we're going to start here with the uh, second paragraph down, and it says, I'm now wanting to clear up the record because I've become extremely stressed and overwhelmed by the deaths of my loved ones, Ms. Patterson said. I am hoping this statement might help in some way. I believe if people understood the background more, they would not be so quick to rush to judgment. I am now devastated to think that these mushrooms may have contributed to the illness suffered by my loved ones. I really want to repeat that I had absolutely no reason to hurt these people whom I loved. 
So it says, contrary to initial reports from police who said Ms. Patterson's children were present but not eat the meal, Ms. Patterson said the children had actually gone to the movies prior to lunch. Because that's what we talked about earlier. Now, it says that according to her statement, Ms. Patterson served the meal, allowed the guests to choose their own plates. She then took the last plate and ate a serve of the beef wellington herself. Ms. Patterson said the mushrooms were a mixture of button mushrooms purchased at a major supermarket chain and dried mushrooms bought at an Asian grocery store in Melbourne months previously. The Patterson children ate the leftovers from the lunch the following night. However, Ms. Patterson said the children did not like mushrooms, so she scraped them off the meal. Okay, now pause there for a second because there's so much here. First of all, the children. Okay, so number one, depending on which way you go, it could be completely innocent that they went to the movies, but isn't that convenient that they weren't there? You know, also this whole thing of they didn't like, so they scraped them off the plate. Now, I would need to see, if per, like, be there to see what they're talking about because I am envisioning, number one, th some kind of, like, mixture with the mushrooms mushrooms would be on top of the beef or something and that's where I was like Ugh. but maybe the mushrooms were like a side item I'm just like you know here's the beef here's the rice here's the mushrooms that type thing regardless okay regardless I just still have questions I just still have questions that why were the children eating that the next day I, that doesn't make sense to me and also I just feel like I almost feel like there was almost two different things made right because part of me is like if these po if these mushrooms were that poisonous again when did they transfer on the plate somehow even being near them like even say you scrape them off but you moved your meat over the part where they were at i mean i don't know how that works right uh, but it sounds completely just eesh. okay now also remember how they're like mistaken for this asian type you know uh native uh, uh mushroom or whatever we read earlier and she's saying oh i got the dried mushrooms at an asian grocery store in melbourne months previously now this is where she'll say i don't really remember which one it was so number one she's saying months ago she got these not 100% sure and they're dried out. Now, we're going to talk about her little uh, veggie dryer thing or whatever because she's lied about that. She's gotten caught in a lot of lies. So keep this in mind about the dried mushrooms as we continue to go. So here we go. All right. Ms. Patterson said it had not been previously reported that she was also hospitalized after the lunch with bad stomach pains and diarrhea and was put on a saline drip and given a liver protective drug. She said she was transported by ambulance from Leon Gotha Hospital to the Monash Medical Center in Melbourne on July 31st. So the luncheon was the 29th. She was transported on the 31st. Gibson Southern Health Service confirmed a fifth person who presented at that hospital on July 30th with suspected food poisoning later returned and was sent to Monash. So she's in this mix here, but notice she didn't get it as bad. When we talk about my feelings on this at the end, we'll talk about this because again, I'm like, could be innocent. But how convenient. Let's keep going. As her guest fell critically ill, Ms. Patterson said she was contacted by the Department of Health and asked what might have caused the violent reaction to the meal. She said she preserved what was left of the lunch and gave it to hospital toxicologists for examination. She said she told investigators from the department where she had bought the mushrooms, although she was unable to identify the specific shop in Melbourne where she bought the dried fungi. Ms. Patterson said officials from the department later sent her photographs of packs of mushrooms with handwritten labels similar to those she described to them. Okay, now here's the thing here. So when they start to, as a guest fell critically ill, Ms. Patterson says she was contacted by the Department of Health. So again, the timeline of this, when and I'm still in my mind right now, stuck on the children eating the leftovers the next day. She has them over the 29th. And it says within hours, they were like getting, you know, incredibly sick, you know, and so on and so forth. Now let's say they're all, two of them were a couple. Well, it's two couples. Each of them start getting sick. So they had to be like, you're sick, I'm sick. Maybe we ate so, like that correlation and maybe they called each other. Other. I mean, I don't know. If you had just eaten at somebody's house and this happened, I mean, come on. So again, at what point was she contacted? So if we're going on this notion of she didn't know about total accident, well, the kids ate the leftovers the next day. Well, by then... I mean, you know, th this would have been, what is she contacted by then? Another questioning of why were the kids eating those leftovers at that point? But again, I could be, I don't know the exact timeline of like, well, this person was contacting here and whatnot. Now, again, then throw her in the mix. She's taken there because she has diarrhea and all this. 
this is what blows my mind about it, where I'm like, this doesn't add up. Why were your kids eating this leftover meal? I don't mean to get stuck on that, but it just seems so weird to me. Okay, let's continue. All right, so it says, Ms. Patterson also addressed media reports that police investigating the deaths had seized a food dehydrator at a local tip, saying it was hers. Okay, now this is a major, okay? In this statement, Ms. Patterson admitted she lied to investigators when she told them she had dumped it at the tip a long time ago. Ms. Patterson said she was at the hospital with her children discussing the food dehydrator when her ex-husband, the son of the dead couple, asked, is that what you use to poison them? Mate, we're going to come back to it. Worried that she might lose custody of the couple's children, Ms. Patterson said she then panicked and dumped the dehydrator at the tip. Okay numerous things. First of all, let's just go and address this. The husband, ex-husband. Now, we don't know their vibe. I wasn't there. I wasn't friends with them. I don't, there's might be reasons, obviously, that they separated. So, you know, there could be a lot of that going on. The fact that he's like thinking that she killed them. I mean, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is not good. The fact that then this is another red flag. I was afraid I'd lose custody of the children. So I panicked and threw it away and lied. That's major. No, I get it. If we're going on two notions here, number one, it's a complete accident. Losing custody of your children and whatnot is a scary thing that could push someone to do something shady and lie. Given the context that this is where I'm like, way too much stuff is going on. You have a food dehydrator, you know, and the dehydrated mushrooms are what took out your guest. And your ex-husband says something about it, who was supposed to be at the dinner. And then you panic and throw it away and lie about it. Girl. No. Okay, so then it says former husband was supposed to be at the mushroom lunch. Miss Patterson alluded to media speculation about the fact that her estranged husband, Simon Patterson, reportedly spent a fortnight in hospital last in May last year with a severe stomach illness unrelated to the current incident. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a little something investigative reporting to do real quick to look up. Please hold. Okay, what is first one, what is a fortnight? Fortnite, British, a period of two weeks. Okay, so half a month, 14 days, a pay period if you get paid every other week. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, let's continue. In her statement, Ms. Patterson said she reluctantly agreed to nurse Simon Patterson for three weeks after he was discharged from hospital before telling him that she did not want to reconcile with him. Hold up. Okay, let's just go back over here. So he spent a fortnight, which we now know is two weeks, in hospital in May last year with a severe stomach illness unrelated to the current incident. Okay, so interesting, but again, could be coincidental. I mean, Michael Patterson had, uh, it's not funny. Michael Peterson, I'm sorry. I was going to say they have the same last name. He had two, you know, former women in his life that ended up dead at the bottom of the stairs. I mean, coincidences do happen, right? So it says she reluctantly agreed to nurse Simon back to health for three weeks. This is giving martyr this is giving uh attention seeking uh, but it could also be giving she can't stand him and didn't want to nurse him back and then she told him she didn't want to reconcile with him there's a lot to be uncovered there okay a lot to be uncovered which will come out in court and whatnot if this ends up to that level because i'm just getting uh, I, I'm not a good vibe off this now also in a minute when we talk about my overall thoughts about the case we're going to come back to this as well because i do think that this could be a potential motive here with the whole nursing thing. It's giving misery. It's giving Annie Wilkes. Okay, let's continue. Now it goes on to say Miss Patterson said her estranged husband intended joining the fatal lunch, but told her prior to the day that he would not be attending. She paid tribute to her parents in law, saying she'd been close to them for a long time and had maintained a positive relationship even after her marriage breakdown. I've been close with Simon's parents for a long period of time. Our relationship had continued in a fairly amicable way after I finished the relationship with their son Simon she said. No, fairly amicable. Okay, this is interesting. Our relationship was affected to some degree by seeing them less after my marriage breakdown with Simon. However, I never felt differently towards his parents. I had a deep love and respect for Simon's parents and it encouraged my children to spend time with their grandparents as I believed they were exceptional role models. A representative for Simon Patterson declined to comment. Police are continuing their investigations into the death. Uh, Ms. Patterson says she was willing to assist police, potentially to the extent of being re-interviewed. Uh, there's been no update. Uh, there, the cops aren't commenting on it, that type thing. Okay. So, 
there's all that. And we're going to revisit some of that stuff there. But again, there's something up with that marriage. Now, again, the whole thing of her having former in-laws over and whatnot, honestly, did not completely shock me because I was like, you know what? She's known these people for 12 years. She has their children or their grandchildren. I mean, this could not be a completely out there thing. And part of me was like, well, you never know. Maybe Simon was like the toxic one, right? And they were just like, yep, you know what? We're going to put that aside. We get it. Our son's whatever. Let's, you know, do our thing here and go see her. But it could go either way. She could also been planning to take out everybody, right? But I don't think she was really planning that. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I want to do now is move on to another thing. And we're going to actually look at some video clips of this. Now, again, y'all, this is this is Daily Mail kind of vibes here. You know, just a little note off the side, but nothing, you know, that we need to it, take it with a grain of salt, okay? Now, what we're going to be watching are some clips of a tradesman who had done some work in the house to paint. And uh, what he painted over was a very ominous, very uh, prediction if you will. So let's watch a few clips on this. This local tradie was asked to paint over the disturbing images last year when the property went up for sale. The tombstones down the bottom sort of done it for me. Yeah, like rest in peace grandma and rest in peace me and all that. The painter says detectives have asked him for the images. So she had all this, you know, kids writing on the wall, all this kind of stuff that had these kind of bizarre, you know, ominous type things there. So it's like, okay, you know, <laughs> And then this happens later, right? And so, you know, he'll go on in this interview to be like, well, who would let their kids ride them all like that? I mean, we don't, everybody's different, right? The fact that it probably stayed up there for so long is a little bit weird. And then things like that as well, you know, not knowing the story behind it and then seeing what took place. It's just like, uh, yeah, not cute. Okay, now we're going to look at some clips for our little finale, if you will, of a impromptu interview she gave outside her home, it looks like, when she was, you know, coming in from grocery or whatever. Now, obviously you can imagine the media is living outside of her house right now, okay? This is major. So she's a little upset over that. Understandably, if you were innocent or guilty, doesn't matter. This would be, I can't imagine, right? So I'll give her that. But what we're going to do is just look at a few clips. I'll make some commentary on them, and then we'll talk about overall thoughts after that. Can you tell us about the meal that you cooked? I'm so devastated by what's happened, by the loss of... Don, and, Don is still in hospital, the loss of Ian and Heather and Gail. They were some of the best people that I've ever met. Gail was like... Take your time. Gail was the mum that I didn't have because my mum passed away four years ago. And Gail's never been anything but good and kind to me. Okay, y'all. Now, here's the thing. I didn't say at the beginning. Y'all already know. I ain't no psychologist. I'm no doctor. I'm no cop. I ain't none of that fancy credentialed stuff. Okay. Just a guy with a sofa, a dog, opinions on true crime. That is totally suspect to me, okay? Number one, notice in these clips that we watch, whenever they ask her a direct question, she goes into this level of gaining sympathy. Okay, he asked her about this and she immediately goes into it. And the fact she's like, Gail was the mother I, I always or never had because my mom passed away four years ago, or whatever she said. On one side, I understand you're not going to want to answer specific questions to the media because it's, it's, you know, this could be incriminating or whatever. I don't know how the laws work over there, but regardless, it's not in your best interest. I get that, right? But to immediately go into this, give me sympathy. Give me sympathy. Now, I also look at it from this level of if I had four people over to my house who were all now dead and it was completely an accident right like no ulterior motives how horrifyingly bad would you feel yeah i mean this is terrible right this is a terrible terrible thing even worse if it's intentional right so i mean i'm giving her that but also when i'm looking at her with the way that her eyes looked and avert and the tears and notice what she does with the the the, the touching her eyes and the tears and the looking and the wanting to make it I, i'm crying i'm crying i'm not vibing this okay but again we've seen we don't know how people react in different situations we're all different right and so everyone acts a different way and reacts a different way you know and so again this hasn't gone through court it hasn't even gotten to that point yet yeah, it could turn out to be a complete accident, right? But something seems off about this. But again, 
I don't know what it's like to have a sea of journalists outside my house. I don't know what it's like to have served four people who are now dead, one fighting for his life. You know, there's all that going on too. So again, I want to kind of look at both sides of the fence and not just come at it from a way of, oh my God, she's guilty, she's guilty. Because the fact of the matter is, I don't know. Can, t can you tell us a bit more about the lunch? What I can tell you is that I just can't fathom what has happened. I just can't fathom what has happened. Okay, again, now you saw this one. Again, would I be doing that? I don't know. I know I would be super awkward. I mean, how awkward is this, right? I mean, 100%. Doesn't answer the question, doesn't want to talk about the lunch, goes right into the tragedy of it, the this, the that. And again, I don't know what I would be saying because if you're innocent, I would like to think that I would be like, look, this is a horrible accident. I don't know what happened or how these mushrooms got mixed in with what I bought from this store, but we need to get to the bottom of this. There would be urgency on my part of how in the hey diddle diddle did this happen, right? Damn near anger, okay? But you don't see that from her, and that concerns me. Let's watch the next clip. That Ian and Heather have lost their lives, and Gail has lost her life, and Donna's still in hospital, and I pray. I pray that he pulls through, because my children love him. And you must be pretty shaken up with this as well. I'm devastated. I love them. And I can't believe that this has happened and I'm so sorry. Okay, now let's just say this. If he pulls through God willing and let's pray that he does. I mean, who all wants to line up to get the, the story from him, right? What was said at this dinner? What went down at this dinner? What was the vibe? Was there a sinister vibe? Like, cause imagine if you go with the whole thing, if she did this on purpose, imagine if she was like going and doing these things, like enjoying the secretive control that she had over the situation of what she was about to do. And so maybe she was bringing up things from the past or whatever, right? Or being completely normal and nonchalant. Say it was an accident and they were talking about the weather and what's going on at church and the, the grandkids and this and that type thing. It is going to be major to hear his side of the story of what took place, right? So hopefully we will survive, not just for that, but clearly, you know, to save his life. Again, the way she's talking, blinking, I'm not there. So to me, it doesn't look like she's actually crying. Like I, I, but I can't tell really, but again, it just doesn't look like she's actually crying. But again, I'm not there, but she's not, there's something odd about eye contact and all that. But again, benefit of the doubt, this could be a completely awkward situation. It is right. So if she is innocent, then that would explain the odd behavior. Cause we've seen this before. Let's go on to the next clip. How are you? <laughs> Just can't believe it. Can you tell us where the mushrooms came from? <laughs> so again, asking her questions, she, you know, let's look at the water on my fingers and let's continue on. Can't believe it, can't believe it, which is normal. I mean, I, I would be, I'd be completely crying over that, right? But again, just that weird body language, deflect any questions about that specific things. Let's go on to this next clip. Police say you're a suspect. Do you have anything to say about yes, that? Yes, I say I didn't do anything. I love them. And I'm devastated that they're gone. And I hope with every fiber of my being that Don pulls through. So again, very adamant. I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I, I, I'm not a suspect, all this kind of stuff, which this is more in line with what I would expect to see. And again, I expect to see the devastation, the sadness, the talking about them, but I would expect to see more of this, like more of, we need to go, we need to be recall, like we need to get to these grocery stores. We need to get here. Like, you know, recall this. This should never have happened. People need to be held accountable. You're just not seeing that from her. And it's very just odd to me. Let's watch the last clip. That's Where what I have to say. Come from? Did I pick by you or where did they come from there? Can you tell us? She got real quiet over that. They went in for the kill. Where did they come from? Were they picked by you? Tell us, Aaron, where did they come from? Mm -mm, she ain't going to answer that, right? Okay. 
let's start talking about some overall stuff. Now, again, I'm going to say it a hundred times. She is not proven guilty of this yet. We do not know. This could come up with proof that it was a true accident, a tragic, horrifying accident. We could also come up with proof that she did this intentionally. Here are my red flags with this. I've already said it a hundred times about the kids eating the leftovers the next day. Okay, there's that. Having everyone over, ex-husband included, for this meal... It's just a little bit odd, but nonetheless, okay, cool. The ex-husband who had already had some kind of stomach thing unrelated to this incident in the past. Where else? I mean, where else can I go? Her behavior in this little interview, lying about the food dehydrator. While there's an answer that you can look at on both sides for everything, it's also like, huh. Eh. Now, also, allegedly, if it's true, this uh, friend saying she's a really, her and Simon were really good foragers. They were always picking mushrooms and doing this. This was like a normal thing. Then wouldn't she know better? Wouldn't she look at this thing and be like, huh? Or maybe dried out death caps look like any other mushroom. And wherever she got them from, mix them in. I mean, you know. Know what I'm saying? So this is what I tend to believe is going on here with my unprofessional sofa opinion, okay? Just that, not fact. This is just an opinion. I think what's going on is we might have a little situation where she did not intend to kill these people at all. Maybe just a little bit sick, a little bit let me come to the rescue. A little bit let me nurse you back. Uh, the Annie Wilkes thing. The Gypsy Rose mom thing. That kind of a vibe. Maybe things got a little out of hand. Maybe somebody ate a little much. Maybe they were potent and this took place. So... Or it could have been a final meal, right? I tend to think she was doing something that was going to cause some kind of interaction to have to do with one another. Like, I'm going to have to tend to them. I'll come in and rescue her. Or let me bring this to you. That type of situation. To me, one answer would come forth is if we were actually to hear from Simon. And if he set the record straight on his side of, this is why the marriage ended. This is what was going on. Because if it was him that ended it and didn't want to be with her, this this would all fall more into line with like, okay, got it. Now, if it was that he was like, say some, you know, I mean, I don't even know, like, I don't know much about him, but if he is some, you know, crazy ex-husband that she couldn't stand anymore and so on and so forth. There you go. The fact that she nursed him back to health one time and then was like, I don't want to reconcile things with you is odd. It was almost like you could see this playing out again of, well, I'm going to serve this to everybody and... And maybe she was just planning on serving it at Simon. But then you would think that she would have taken the mushrooms away, right? If it was like, oh, he's not going to be here. Let me take this away. Like, she knew he liked mushrooms, which clearly she did. She was married to him and they forged them, right? So that's like a no-brainer. I just feel that's my opinion of it, though. I think something like that is what's going on. Because, again, I'll say this. There's not been, at the time it's recording, there's no major food recall. We're not hearing any major thing of, oh, my God, shut down this, shut down that. I bought these at an Asian market. Can't really remember specifically which one months ago. I mean, come on. Forage mushrooms herself. Why didn't she already have some? You know, this whole thing about throwing the dehydrator away, that's major, okay? The painting stuff on the wall, you know, I mean, that can go either way with me. It's definitely weird, but I mean, I would need way more information about that, right? And then also the behavior during this interview, it didn't set well with me. It didn't set well with me at all. And again, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt of, you know, like I've said, she's being interviewed. This has happened. It's tragic. I mean, all of it can play into that, but I didn't like the tone of her answers because they just seem geared to gain sympathy and dodging those hard-hitting questions, you know. But again, it's like, I wouldn't want to be answering those either. I would know that anything I said was going to be torn apart. And if somebody's asking me about some major, potentially incriminating things, whether I was, you know, whether if I knew I was innocent or not, I know this question can be incriminating. So I'm not going to put it out there. Because imagine this. Imagine she said, I got it at uh, Market 123 uh, on Street, you know, whatever. Whatever. Well, you know they're going to all run over there and they're going to be questioning them and it's going to put them on blast. If that's where you got them, I would want to do that, though. I'm like, I got them at the Piggly Dan Wiggly, okay, over on uh, the corner of Billy Bob and, uh, you know, Aunt, Aunt Wilma or whatever. I'd want to put them on blast. Let's get some answers. Why, how, why did they sell me death caps? That's how I would be about it. I wouldn't want to be protecting the grocery store. I would be upset at them. You know, I can't remember where it is. We're getting in the car and going, okay? We're getting in the car and going. Maybe she's done that at this point, you know, but it's very weird that there's been crickets on that.
you know, that part's very odd to me. So anyways, this is the Mushroom Massacre. <laughs> I mean, I just, I can't believe we're talking and even having this conversation, right? Let's send out good vibes and prayers that, that Ian makes it through, right? Not only for his own benefit, but to also find out like what went down at this dinner. Um, so there's that. And also once again, thank you to Drew for sponsoring this video and making my car rides that much more enjoyable with their beautiful scents. Um, all their stuff's in the description below. So be sure and check that out and don't forget that code that's on the screen right now. It's signed up before I forget. I also think what she probably could have done if she is guilty of doing it is that she could have given herself a very low dosage of it to make it look like, look, I got sick too. Think about all these crimes that we see where the, where the perpetrator wants to, say, kill his family but make it look like an intrusion or something like that. So they kind of harm themselves, but then their family is, like, brutally taken out, right? This is that, but in a different way, in a poisoning way. I ate one little sliver and got an upset tummy, but oops, all the guests are dead. You know, so there's that. Now, if you are still watching, I thank you. Roscoe is on top of the covers and asked to put some sofas over there for him. He's still, you know, he's he's in the room with us. And he says, thank you for watching to the end too. Dying to know your opinions, okay? Dying to know. What do you think? Do you think it's on purpose? Do you think it's not? I mean, every, all the things we need to know. We need to know in the comment section. And until we meet down in the comment section to talk about all the things Mushroom Massacre, I'll see y'all there.